Okay. Now here's chapter two. So now Janie's going to start telling the story to her friend Phoebe. So Janie's going to start telling the story. She's going to say, here's what happened with tea cake. The story does not start with tea cake. She goes all the way back to the beginning. I know, we hate that. They do that in movies all the time. But they're going to do it. So they go back to her when she was younger. Janie starts talking about how she did not know her father and mother. She spent her entire life in Florida. She lived with her grandmother, who she called Nanny. So we want to write, we want to make sure we have that. She called her Nanny. And she lived with four white children in the Washburn house. And that's who Nanny worked for. Nanny spent, or Janie spent so much time with all these white kids, she didn't even realize she was black until she saw herself in a photograph and realized she was a different color than them. It's crazy, right? Um, they used to call Janie a nickname. They used to call her Alphabet when she was a little kid. <clears throat> Because people called her all these different nicknames, so eventually they just started calling her alphabet, like different names and different words. Even when Janie was a little kid, she was very pretty, and people were jealous of her. She dressed in white children's clothes that they were hand-me-downs. Like when they were done with it, they would give it to her. So she dressed better than other black children. Um, the other kids used to tease Janie a lot because of who her parents were. Because everybody knew kind of a story. I guess apparently her, the police were hunting for her father because her father had slept with her mother. Um, but I guess there was like a, possibly a rape situation. But anyway, the part about the, her father had tried to marry her mother later, but nobody had talked about that part of it because that was normal. You know, people only like the bad gossip. Um, Nanny, the grandma, does her best to give Janie what she can. Uh, they buy their own house and their own land that's close to the Washburn family. And then she goes forward. Now, here's where it gets important. Now Janie is 16 years old, and she is discovering sex for the first time. How do we do that? Remember we talked about this? The bee that's pollinating the, blo the, the, the pear tree. So she's out under this pear tree, and she sees a bee pollinating this pear blossom. And she thinks of it as kind of a sexual type of a situation. She thinks it's really beautiful, and she imagines that this must be what love and marriage are like. And she envies this tree. She's like has a, like a, a jealousy. She wants that. So this tree and this bee and all that, that becomes a symbol in the book for her dream, for that what's what she wants for love and marriage. And then Janie sees a guy named Johnny Taylor, and she's like, oh, I'm wondering about all these romantic things. So, her nanny's inside taking a nap, so she decides, maybe I'll just go have a kiss. And unfortunately, while Johnny and Janie are having a little makeout session, nanny looks out the window and catches them, and she says, Janie, oh, you're a woman now, so now you got to get married. Because she doesn't want her to become a woman who gets passed around by other men and just has too much sex, and people think of her as a hoe. Does that make sense? Right, so she wants her to get married now so that that doesn't happen to her. Do we, make, do we get that? So, yeah, right here. Nanny's afraid she's going to get used by men and treated like garbage. Um, so, Nanny sets her up with a man named Logan Killix who wanted to marry Janie because she was cute. Unfortunately, Janie is disgusted because he is a real old. You'll love this. Look what it says. He looks like some old skull head in the graveyard. You know how when people get really old, they look like skeletons? Yeah, he looks like that. Um, now, Nanny accuses Janie of not being an honest wife and gets mad at Janie because she doesn't want to marry him and she doesn't, you know, all this. Janie cries, so Nanny's like, oh, it's okay. You're just going to have to get used to it. You've got to marry him. Nanny explains, Janie, I don't want you to suffer like your mom did. She says, and this is important, she says, she explains to her that the black women are the mule of the world. Does everyone understand what that means? Sure. What do you use mules for in the world, typically? Everything. They just carry things. They're like servants. And she's afraid that if Janie doesn't get married, she's just going to be servants for other people her whole life. She doesn't want that to happen, so that's why she's making her marry this Logan Killix. So... Nanny thinks her days are numbered, meaning she's getting old. She wants to make sure that Janie is protected before she dies. So she says she's going to have to marry this guy. 
So eventually they do, look at this, they finally give us the time period. It's the early 1900s right now. So there's your setting, there's your time period. And Nanny had grown up as a slave when she was a kid. She doesn't want that to happen to Janie. And then she starts describing the Civil War and all this other crap that we could skip because nobody cares. Um, and then Janie ran away to, or Nanny went to a swampland. It's, it's basically Nanny's whole backstory. And I'm going to be honest, it's not important. You don't really need to know it to know the rest of the story. If you're interested, when you get to the book, you can read it, but it's not important. And then eventually Nanny ended up in West Florida where she met the Washburn family. And then she had a daughter named Leafy, who is Janie's mom. Um, she put her in school when Leafy was 17. She got raped by the white school teacher. And then Leafy gave birth to Janie. Leafy became an alcoholic later and left town. So that's how um, Nanny ended up being her caretaker. And so now Nanny wants to see her granddaughter get married before she dies. At the end of the chapter, Nanny says, I can't die easy thinking men, white or black, is making a spit cup out of you. So have some sympathy for me. Like, get married. Do we all understand what she's saying here? It's a metaphor. She just didn't want to get used exactly. Do you guys know what a spit cup is? You, when people spit. use tobacco and then they would spit into the cup. It's where you get rid of the stuff you don't want. They don't want Janie to get treated like a spit cup. It's a metaphor. Anybody have any questions about chapter two? Stop.